What's up, everybody? It's your boy Happy from Happy's Trails. Got my boy Fu here. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm a retired firefighter, and Phil is still uh, an active firefighter for Chandler Fire. So what we thought we'd do um, is some basic, like first aid. Basically, we're gonna call it "Stop the Bleed" type video, um, and to help you guys. Maybe you guys are out hiking or hunting or something, and you know you guys get hurt. Like we want you to know how to be able to handle that. So let's get into it. All right, what we're gonna use today is a first aid kit that comes from Fieldcraft Survival. I'll put a link in their description. And the first part of the video is gonna be just opening it, showing you what's in it. And then as we're going along doing that, we'll explain what they are and how to use them. And then we'll go into a little more detail of what to do in case of an emergency when you're out by yourself. So I'll put in the description, I'll put some times and stuff. So if you just wanna to jump to a certain area of the video, you can do that. So with that being said, let's get this pack open and check out what it is. All right, so here's the, the first aid kit. This is a personal first aid kit that we got from Fieldcraft Survival. And uh, this is meant for one person. So it'd be best for anybody who's in your group or you know hiking pack or whatever you guys are doing have their own individual one i decided to go with this one because it was um made for like hiking and hunting and i felt it was the best overall one the most complete for pretty much any situation that one person could handle so you know props to fieldcraft for coming up with this thing it's got an awesome uh case um has some molly straps on it some straps for your belt here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice zipper velcro whatever you need you know what i mean fieldcraft sells a pretty awesome backpack that you can unfold and stick all these individual things in there keep it in your vehicle or something just tear off what you need when you need it all right well let's get this thing open and take right. a look what's inside open it up got the dual, dual uh, zippers there and obviously the first thing you want to look at all right so we took everything out of the pack and this is all that was in it. We did a quick check to make sure everything was in there and it was. I'll put the list up for you right here and we'll show it to you as I read it off really quick. We got one tourniquet. tourniquet. We got one vent chest seal, twin pack, mini emergency trauma dressing. Uh, we, got this one. Right. we got a compressed gauze. A set of nitrile gloves so these gloves are size large so that they fit pretty much anybody if you're a smaller person and you want to open it up put your own size in there or put multiple in there it's not a yeah, bad idea there's, there's plenty of room there's room in there yeah more pockets and then uh so we got one set of trauma shears and we have one emergency survival blanket so there you go everything's in there and what we're going to do next is we're going to go over some of the stuff and show you how some of this stuff is used. Remember, what we're showing you is just what we feel like you can do to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is enough stuff to take care of one person in an emergency situation to get you to help, yourself to help, or if you come across a down person and they need help. But like I said, this is made for one person, so you guys should grab another kit if there's gonna be two people or grab a bigger kit, check with Fieldcraft Survival. They have a little bit of everything for you guys. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull some of this stuff out and show you what it's for, okay? All right, so we're just gonna give you a couple quick scenarios starting from the head down. So, but what we wanna talk about before that is the two types of bleeds that we have. You have venous and you have arterial, right? Yep. And so the difference between those two is I have a little syringe filled with water. In case you're not familiar or you have any doubt, let's say you cut a vein, it might even be as fast as that. But if you cut an artery, hopefully you can see that, it's literally gonna be like, it will be shooting out like that. So you can definitely tell the difference. So just cause you have a quick um, venous bleed, try not to panic in either scenario and get the proper stuff to take care of yourself. So with that being said, let's get started. We have a set of gloves in here if you wanna put those on, especially if it's somebody else you wanna use them. We're not gonna put those on, we're just training and showing you what we're doing. So Phil is walking through the woods and he just happens to turn his head when he's talking and hits his head and has a pretty significant bleed coming out of his head. 
What's something you're going to do to that? The main thing is direct pressure onto that wound. So That's what's the, the first thing, thing you would use is probably just some gauze yep. or your trauma dressing, right? Yeah. So basically open up your gauze and, and this, what this is for is actually absorbs a lot of that of that blood so hopefully when it absorbs it it'll it gives your body a chance to clot so it could stop that bleeding and then once it does that then we could wrap it with the trauma dressing because this will actually absorb more um, blood if it still continues to bleed but it'll actually help stabilize the, the bandage once you have that gauze on there and you just kind of keep wrapping and either way whatever scenario you you want to start thinking about what you need to do to get yourself to safety or get some help so with any of these cuts or bleeds, you want to keep it elevated, right? So if you hit your head, you can sit up against a tree to put pressure on it. Yeah. That'd yeah. be better than laying down, right? Because you don't want to lay down and, you know, add exactly. pressure, add to, add it, pressure to that. Yeah, exactly. So just because you get a cut on your neck too, I'm just going down the body here, but just because you get a cut in the neck does not mean that you hit an artery. If it's not squirting out, don't worry about it. Your face, you know, it's your head and face is super venous so it's gonna scare you because it does there's a lot of capillaries there's a lot of capillaries yeah. you're gonna bleed a lot but if it's not squirting don't go trying to throw a freaking <laughs> tourniquet <laughs> on your neck or something you know that's the last thing you want to yeah, do yeah we're ne you're yeah. never gonna put a tourniquet <laughs> on your neck okay so but what you want to do is the same thing with the face is you're gonna put direct pressure mm -hmm. and you want to stop that bleeding and then when you feel like it's slow enough or you, you can get you know, a uh, higher level of care. Okay, so next we're gonna go down. We already talked about the face, and one thing I wanna point out about your face is if you get some kind of, this is throughout your body, you get anything impalement, you don't wanna pull it out. If, if it comes out, like say you fell down on a twig and your reaction was to get up and it came out, that's a different story. But like if you fall down and get a twig in your eye or something or, or it's impaled, impaled in your body, leave it in there and pack around it. We'll get we'll hit more on yeah. that in a second. But since we're talking about the face, I wanted to point out that there has been people to get stuff stuck in their eyes, impaled in their eyes. And their first reaction is to jerk it out. You don't want to do that. Because what what happens is if that if that object impaled an artery, it's actually blocking that artery from bleeding out because once you pull it out and if you did hit an artery guess what you just opened up the uh, the floodgates and you don't want to damage your eyeball pulling it out because it's that same object is coming out all right so we'll get moving so talking about the neck the same thing you have something on your neck if it's not squirting blood don't worry you didn't mm -hmm. hit an artery so just direct pressure and you're gonna have to hold it for the most part because like i said we don't want you putting a tourniquet on any of that mm -hmm. stuff you know, worst case scenario, I guess you could use a tourniquet on your head, yeah. like a bandana type thing, do a little Rambo action, you know, <laughs> but we don't want you using the tourniquet on your neck, period, period. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. All right, so now let's go down. We'll talk about the um, extremities now, and then we'll go over like the torso and stuff like that. So any of your extremities and you get a cut and it's not, you know, just on your hands or something like that, and it's bleeding and it's bleeding good, but it's not squirting, it's the same treatment mm -hmm. direct pressure so what if what if they're wearing long sleeves or pants or something and they notice this bleed and they're trying to just direct pressure is that right or is that wrong well if i mean honestly i the, the thing you want to do when you have a wound is you want to expose everything get rid of all that clothes yeah, that's so, in the vicinity so you can see yeah. exactly where and it's that's, at that's what the reason why you have these shears is to i'm gonna cut the, I'm gonna take this whole shirt off. I'm, if he's wearing pants, don't I'm, cut my new field craft shirt. <laughs> he's awesome better not. Shirts. But yeah, and because you want to expose, because you don't know what else is going on. You could have maybe a small bleed, but then hey, what if it went through and you have actually something in the backside or or anything like that? So you need to expose that wound. You can't just say, oh, it's bleeding. Put some pressure on it. If it's bleeding, expose it, see what's around it, see what's going on in there. Get some eyes on it, check it all out. You have to assess what's going on. So you wanna do that for any part of your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause you've got, you've got arteries in a lot of places. And if, if you look at your pants and it's bleeding down here on your like say knee level and you're just like, oh, it's just dripping out. So no problem. Well, it might actually be a femoral artery a little higher and it's squirting out, but it, the clothes is catching it. And letting it run down so you really want to make sure you cut everything off and expose always see your wound we talked about your arms what about if you cut off a finger for what you have to stop that bleeding um again your compression gauze pressure and then your trauma dressing to wrap it and then 
when you have time, you could actually get that extremity, that severed extremity, put some water in, and, and if you have some of this uh, trauma dressing left, just, just dampen it with water, wrap it, because these days they could they could reattach it if you get help soon enough. Okay? So if you lose a finger or toe or something, or any extremity, really, you chop off your dang leg, you know, you want to do what you can to preserve it or get it to the hospital with you. But the main thing is stopping that bleeding. So going back to your extremities, you know, now you've uh, had direct pressure on it. It's not stopping. You feel like you need to get out of there and, you know, it's still bleeding. And even though you put on your trauma dressing, it's still bleeding. So a couple things you can do is you can you need to elevate it if you can, you know what I mean? Especially while you're holding the direct pressure, you mm -hmm. want to hold it up and that'll that'll help slow down the bleeding and hopefully yeah. stop it. And then if you're going to self extricate and you need to get out of there, you got your little kid all packed up, use that and put it under your armpit or something to help put pressure on your pressure points to slow yeah. down your slow circulation. Down slow down circulation. Yep. And it, you can do it on your, on your elbow too, anywhere you can grab, you know what I mean? Like there's a joint you can do, you know, you can do it anywhere. You don't have to do it just directly on the wound, but you want to make sure that if it starts bleeding out that you do that. Get That'll it. just buy you more time and yeah. help you out. It slows down the circulation. Mm -hmm. And like people use neckties, they use t-shirts, belts, anything to, 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 to try to slow down circulation by, by pressing on those pressure points. And they're usually, I mean, where you could feel a pulse or anything, some, uh, that's called a brachial pulse right here. They, they'll wrap it around and we'll get into more extreme cases with the tourniquet. Um, Cause we don't expect you to walk out and self extricate yeah. yourself. You know, you got a, a cut on your wrist and then walking like that. You know what I mean? Like we know that you're gonna have to hold it, carry whatever you have with you and get out of there. Legs and stuff, it's all gonna be the same thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? The mm -hmm. same kind of treatment. You wanna keep out, make sure that it's um, a venous cut, direct pressure, use pressure points, elevate until you're ready to ex self extricate. And then, you know, you can do what you need to from that point to stop it. Um, and decide if you need more help. Now we're gonna go up to talk about um, the torso and the torso is pretty much gonna be the same thing. Torso and ab abdomen, it's all gonna be the same thing. You know, you're just gonna put direct pressure on it the best you can and just try to get yourself out of there. Now something that's a little more advanced, um, but it's not necessarily an arterial bleed is like we were talking. I mean, if you're hunting, like hunt, accidents happen. You could get shot if, you know, even if things go crazy and you're, you know, bugging out, you know, and you know, the world's gone crazy and you catch a bullet um, or, you know, you could be in your backyard and fall down and land on a sprinkler and you've been impaled in your back, you know. Again, try not to pull that out. You wanna try to isolate it in place take the gauze, pack it all around it, mm -hmm. you know, wrap that trauma dressing around it and then tie it off. Try to hold it in the exact position that it is. Cause like you said, pulling it out could be extremely detrimental to whether or not you survive this incident. All right, so we talked about all your extremities and stuff. So mm -hmm. next we wanna talk about your chest. And one of the, well, your whole torso, we're gonna do the whole torso, but specifically we wanna talk about the chest right now because this kit comes with something really cool and it's a vented chest seal. So this is to a primarily just for a sucking chest one, right? Yeah. Anything to do with the lungs. Yeah. And so basically with this kit, um, it's a, uh, a chest seal, a twin pack, which means the reason for that is because when there's a gunshot wound, you're gonna have an entrance and then most likely, not all the time, depending on the caliber, you're gonna have an exit. And so that's why it's very important when you, when you come across, whether it's you, or someone you come across, you need to expose that wound because you need to inspect to say, hey, do I have an entrance wound? Do I have an exit wound? And if they do, and they do have both, we use these these uh, chest uh, seals. And that's why Fieldcraft put two into them. <laughs> two of them in there. And they're easy. Good job, brother. It's basically, you open it, you crack it open. It's basically has a, a sticker backing. You just peel it. Just like a big Band-Aid. You see where that wound is? Cover that wound. And then on turn of that, Either it's you or that per that, that person, turn them around, and open if you the could, second one. If you find an exit wound, you want to do the exact same thing. There's no seal that, not, those are both universal. They're good for entrance or exit. There's no, you don't have to worry about which one is the entrance and exit yeah, wound. Yeah, good point. Just <laughs> stick it on there and, you know, make sure you expose. 
That's the key is to expose every time for every injury. I don't care if it's the arterial or the venous that we were talking about. You want to expose and see that. So if it's something below your chest, you're just going to do basically your compressed gauze and then put your trauma dressing on there and get yourself out right. safely. Right. All right, now we're going to go into like a little more detail on the, the arterial bleeds and stuff. So same thing. Um, you're going to do everything you did before with the direct pressure, elevate it. If it's still bleeding, hit your pressure points, your elbow or, you know, armpit, whatever you can do. Yeah, you wedge something under there, wedge a thick stick or, a, you know, a rock in there or something. If you don't have some, roll up a piece of cloth and put it in there. So now we're going to talk about your arterial bleeds. That's going to be really simple compared to everything else because it was a lot of little information direct pressure elevate you want to put pressure points use anything you can in there to slow down blood circulation um and like i said those venous wounds you know they're they're not you're not going to die from them especially if you get some kind of pressure on there but when it comes to arterials and you know that it's an arterial bleed bust this sucker out pull out your tourniquet use it right away the faster you slow down that bleeding the better your chances of surviving so we're going to go ahead and open this up and again you remember if, if you know if it's an arterial bleed or if you've already done your process with the venous uh wound and it's still bleeding and you think okay this is an arterial bleed make sure you expose you ex you cut you cut the sleeves off you cut the uh the shirt off the pants so you could actually see the wound itself okay so this is the first time that I've opened this and seen it. And it's really, really cool. Like we've never had anything as long as I was in the fire service. You guys have anything like this or is it just- And when I first started the fire service, we didn't have these. This is, these actually combat medics um, had these. But now with, uh, you know, with everything that's been going on since 9-11, uh, you know, uh, active shooter, uh, weapons of mass destruction, we have, multiple tourniquets in our bags because they they save lives basically and it's quick um and it gives us more time so what we have here is it's a giant velcro strap basically so what you're going to do is you're going to go above the injury on whatever extremity it is and it's made to be done by yourself but i'm going to demonstrate on on phil here and what you're going to do is it'll be towards you to make it the easiest you want to put it above so let's say he's hit an artery right here we're going to put it up as high as we can where it, where we can safely get a good tight tight thing cinch it down and it velcros to itself just like that and then what's cool nice, about nice this snug. is that snug already yeah oh, that feels good. okay yeah. so then what you have back here is you have this you're going to reach over with your hand go ahead full oh and you're gonna give it a couple twists. Turn this way so they can okay. see a little better. So as I'm twisting this, auto, right away, I get, it's tightening. It's starting to tighten. And then what you're gonna do is drop it right there. See it? This thing is made with these two plastic, uh, like a C here, and it, you set that in there, and this Velcro goes over it, let it go, and, and now set. you're stuck, but and make, you're done. But make sure you 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 only stop turning when the, the bleeding stops. If it's still bleeding, guess what? Crank it you, down. I still have to crank this down. Crank, crank. Now, once I notice that bleeding stop, then I set it in its its resting spot right there, and then put that put that velcro over it. And I just bought myself some time. So, just to show you guys how easy that was, I'm gonna have Phil do it himself. He instantly knows that it's an arterial yeah. bleed because maybe he's wearing the short sleeves like that. Hit something, squirt, and squirt, the, squirt. I know. Now, with these tourniquets, I do not want to put it on my on my joints and if i know that say i i do have an injury on my joint remember what jason said you want to put it as high as you can above that injury so i'm opening it up like this. And this is probably the best thing you can do is just practice with it it's yeah. even better while he's doing yeah. it because now See, now i could i want i want this uh the turn the turn key to where i have access to it and see, when he did it by himself, it automatically started facing him. When I put it on, that that lever was back here. And I just now it's nice and snug, and I just turn. Ooh, I think this is make my arm, my bicep bigger. <laughs> okay, no. and once I know, I notice that bleeding stop. 
I put it in its its little resting port and then make sure so it doesn't come out right there. That thing's tight, huh? It's pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you're not like, I think if I think this hands looking in color. It'll, it'll start yeah, I'll start getting pow. But that works real fast. So that's what you want to do. That's how you use this thing. So other than that, everybody, um, it's the Hunter Pack from Fieldcraft Survival. Go check them out online, their website. They have a ton of useful videos on YouTube. Uh, they're a wealth of knowledge. They're great people. Pretty much all veterans. Well, I think they are all veterans. I shouldn't even say yeah. pretty much, yeah. but they're veterans and just amazing company, amazing guys trying to teach everybody how to survive and be safe. So uh, thank you, Phil, for helping me yeah. out. I appreciate you coming up. And uh, he came up from the valley to film this with me. And thank you guys for watching the channel. Appreciate it. <laughs>